happened back in February of 1971, and I was having some difficulties in my relationship with the woman I was living with, and I decided to go out in the desert with two of my friends uh, to get a little space for three days. And they walked off uh, to do a hike together. They were a couple. And so I was left alone. I hiked to the top of a mountain. Uh, this is in the Mojave Desert in California, near Jawbone Canyon. And I was sitting there on top of this mountain, and I was contemplating my life and how could I have screwed up my life so badly. I'm only 26 years old. I'd already been divorced. I was in a new relationship. The relationship seemed perfect. And I started to feel the same suffocation, the same feeling of being trapped and being bound, uh, and not free, not liberated. And so I was sitting there contemplating on what is this all about. And what came up, was, and it was very spontaneous, was a question. I don't know where it came from, but from deep within me. And the question was, well, where is home? So I began to, and I, I was not a meditator. I never meditated before. But I began to really contemplate or meditate as I was sitting there in a cross-legged Indian fashion, uh, this question. And I had a spontaneous awakening. And body-mind dropped off. Uh, I became one with the cosmos. I, um, I lost the self, dropped the self, and had an experience of being one with all, all things, the whole. And it was such a, an abrupt and immediate experience that was so transformative, I knew from that moment I would never be the same again. And I saw that my life up to that moment had all been pushing forward, going ahead, full steam, whether it be as an athlete, I was a swimmer, an All-American water polo player. I played uh, in the Maccabean Games in Israel in 1965. My college teams, three out of four, were champion, American champion or state championship teams. Uh, everything was about winning, about gain, about fame, about security. I'd already got a master's degree. Uh, I was already had tenure in my, my work. I was teaching school. And all of a sudden, that all seemed very empty, very meaningless. And the only thing that seemed to really matter at that point was to continue to wake up, to continue to clarify uh, what this life really is, and to really share that with others. So I began immediately sharing it with my friends and anybody who was ready to listen. I went back to teaching on Monday. I shared it with my team teacher, shared it with the kids. I mean, I taught them how to meditate. And I hadn't had never had any instruction. But from that experience, I learned how to sit still, do nothing, and be quiet. Well, you know, I've, I've trained uh, 37 years now, 38 years, um, and became a Zen master in 1996. I was given the, uh, what we call Inca, final seal of approval. Uh, I became a successor of my late teacher, my Zumi Roshi, in 1980, and I began training with him in 1972. And we went through a series of what's called koan study. These koans are questions that are difficult to answer and impossible to answer with the rational mind. You must uh, transcend the rational or the dualistic mind and go into a non-dual or transcendent state, which I had already experienced back in 71. So the koans were relatively easy for me, and I went through them uh, rather quickly. In fact, in six years, I went through over 700 of them uh, and became his second uh, student to complete the koan study and his second successor. I would say it's all out there. The, the possibilities, the availabilities technologically uh, are all out there. Choose wisely. Uh, and that you really can wake up. I mean, it, it is really possible. It's not that difficult to wake up. The following up, the follow-up to waking up, the, the practice, the embodiment of that, the integration of that into your life, fulfilling your life, that part is not so easy. I mean, I would say practice at least maybe 30 minutes a day of meditation. Uh, I'd say there are other technologies out there that one could practice. Uh, if you, one is really serious, just like if you're really serious, 
to study a musical instrument, it might be advisable to find a great teacher uh, to work with, someone who can help you. Because one of the things that we know about our ego is our ego is very cunning, it's very conniving, it's very tricky, and the ego will every time fool us. And sometimes we need a good friend or a good partner or a good teacher to kind of you know, help us see where we're stuck, where we're being blind. I myself need that all the time because I know my ability to delude myself is infinite. And we sometimes just need to check things out with another and be open, be receptive, and be willing to hear and to listen to what they have to say uh, and not get defensive. Uh, but I'd say it's all there, and it's possible, and anyone can do it. Anyone can lead an awakened life that's full of love and compassion. It's not that difficult. <music>